Hello everyone. Welcome once again to our channel, Making Life Easier, and to our series on basic mechanics. Today also, in our previous videos, we have looked at how to get the components of a force using angles, how to get a component of a force using distances. Now we want to look at how to get the components of a force or a force which is in 3D in the vector form using coordinates of the point. So quickly, let's look at how to go about it. Kindly subscribe to our channel, like and comment as well. Quickly, let's look at our question. Good. In the figure below, if the magnitude of F is 300 newtons, determine the components of the force. So we can see that we have a 3D object. We have our X, Y, and Z axis. And then we have the coordinates of point A, the coordinates of point B. And our force is moving from A to point B. So let's see how to solve this kind of problems. So, in our previous videos, we have established the fact that there are three ways of finding the components of a force, which is in 3D. And we said that F is equal to F, which is a vector, or F in the component form is equal to F lambda. And if you remember, we said that lambda can be obtained using angles, lambda can be obtained using distances, and lambda can also be obtained using forces. All these three can be used. And we have looked at how to determine lambda using angles and lambda using distances. This one, again, we are going to look at how to obtain lambda using distances. But this one is a bit different from our previous example. In this case, we have been given the coordinates of the two points. And in our previous example, we knew the distances straightforward, the distances on the X, the Y, and the Z. So quickly, let's look at how to solve this problem. From our vectors, if we are moving from point A, if we are moving from point A here to point B, from our vectors, we said that AB, the vector AB will be equal to the position vector of OB minus the coordinates of OB from our vectors in the high schools. So from here, if we have this formula, and then we know the coordinates of A, and then we also know the coordinates of B, then we should be able to determine our AB. So from here, this coordinate here represents the distance on the X axis. This coordinate here represents the distance on the Y. And this coordinate here represents the distance on the Z. In the same way, the first one we have here represents the distance on the X. This represents the distance on the Y. And this represents the distance on the Z. So from here, we can put them together by summing the distance on the X by subtracting the distance of the coordinates of A from that of B. But we do them separately for each of the axes. So our vector AB will be equal to, so first of all, let's look at distance on the X. B, this one is 100 and this one is negative 50. So we are going to get 100 minus negative 50. And all this will give us our distance on the x, which is i. And then we can also, so this one is millimeters. We can finish computing and then we change them to meter, or we can change them to meter before computing. Each of them is okay. So from here, we are going to get millimeter i. And then we do the same for our j. So our j will be 60 minus negative 42, which is going to be. 60 minus negative 42, and all this will be in millimeter G. And then on our Z, we are going to get 95 minus 80, 
which will give us this 95 minus 20 millimeter k. And from here, we can just evaluate. This will give us 150 millimeter I plus 60 plus negative 40, 60 plus 42 will give us 102, 102 millimeter G. So this is I, this is G, which means on the Y. And then for the Z, we have 95 minus 80, which will give us 15 millimeter K. And from here, we can change to meters. So we can get our, this will be 0 0.15 millimeter I. This will be 1.10, 0 0.102 millimeter G, and this one will be 0 0.015 meter K. Then from here, we have been able to get our AB. Don't forget that we said that if you want to get lambda, lambda will be equal to the distance in the X plus the distance in our Y plus the distance in our Z. And that is what we have here. We have the distance in the X, the distance in the Y, and the distance in the Z. But all over D, and we said that D is obtained by squaring everything which is up here, the square root of the square of everything which is up there. And then we are going to get D S square plus D Y square plus D Z square. So from here, if the X is this, the Y is that, and the Z is that then we can get our D to be equal to square root of 0 0.15 square plus 0 0.102 square plus 0 0.015 square. And from here, our D will be equal to, our D will be equal to 0 0.182. So we can get our lambda from there. Our lambda will be 0 0.15 i plus 0 0.102 j plus 0 0.015 k all over 0 0.182. All over 0 0.182. And from here, we can see that our lambda will be equal to 0. 824i plus 0.56j plus 0.082k. Once you have gotten this, you can even go through from what we have done previously from our previous videos. Our f will be equal to our force in the vector form will be equal to our force in the scalar form times our lambda, which we have obtained from here. And from here, we can see that our course will be equal to 300 into bracket 0.824i plus 0.56j plus 0.082k. And from there, we can get our S component of the force, the Y component of the force, and the Z component of the force, which are respectively. 247.2i plus 168j plus our z component, which is 24.6k. So we have now gotten our course in the vector form. So this was very simple and easy to go through. If you had followed our previous videos, you see that we have been able to determine how to determine lambda, which is our direction cosine when we are giving any object in three dimensions. So if you have any comments, any suggestion, if you have anything which you don't understand, you can let us know by putting it at the comment session. Once again, Thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe to our channel and hit on the notification bell. We are happy to see you once again. 
and then kindly join us in our next video. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.